You know, the funny thing is that I didn't ever have that much money back in the day, but I still had a way and figured out a way to become a boss on a budget. Now, the thing here, guys, is going to kind of be long, but I'm going to have everything uh, broken down for you so you get an idea of how to do all this if you choose to do this. But here's the thing. Number one thing, in order to be a boss when it comes to the club, you have to know the game, okay? You see, I never wanted to control all the chess pieces. My thing, like I always try to teach you, is how to control the chessboard. And that's what I wanted, the chessboard. Meaning I never invested in the women in the club. I always invested in the club itself. Now, I'm talking about the kind of club where middle, middle class, and upper class, and the rich roll. Okay? Not these hole-in-the-wall places and shit like that. I don't want you to do it there. I want you to work it here, but don't get me wrong. You can work it in the whole wall club because this is going to work everywhere, but it's going to take some time. You see, back in my day, you know, I didn't have much money. You know, I was working at that cake ass place making about like four was like four thirty five an hour and shit. But I didn't have much money. OK, this is like when I was doing my gigolo thing. You know what? But that's here nor there. But like I said, I didn't have much. But one thing I always did is out of my check every every night, just in a month, I would take $100 out of my paycheck and I would use that to flip my money, use that with the club. Now, I got to explain how the club works. So this is going to kind of be long, but you got to understand how the rules of the game, and how the players play in this club. You see, there are four major players in the club. And, tre- and, and check this out, guys. None of them motherfuckers are women. There are four major players. And these four major players are you have the doorman, you have the bartender, you have the DJ, and you have the owner. Now, the way I would do this is every time I would see the doorman, I would simply go up to him, introduce myself, shake his hand, talk to him for a little while, tell him to have a good night. Okay, and every time that I saw him, I would continue to do the same thing over and over again until he started to notice me. Once he began to notice me and mention my name, that's when I started slipping. Every time I would give him some dap, I would slip him a twenty dollar bill. He would be like, man, what's that for? I said, man, I got you, man. All right, man, you have a good night. All right, dog, you have a good one. And I go into the club. Okay. the second rule, the second play of the game is the bartender. Same thing. Now, remember, every time I saw the bartender, I again, I would go ahead. You know, I don't drink. So, you know, when I get my little bitch ass uh, orange juice and pineapple and if I'm uh, feeling a little froggy and shit, I add Sprite and shit. But every time I saw the bartender, I would do the same thing. I would introduce myself to him. I shake his hand. I talk to him for a few minutes, tell him to have a good night. And then every time I saw him after that and when he began to notice me, that's when I started to slip him either 20 or 30 dollar tips. OK, now, remember, this is just setting everything up. So understand this. I'm going to break all this down later because I don't want to freak you guys out. But anyway, like I said, I give my cake ass drink and I make sure I over tip him. And he always would notice me, He always would thank me and everything. OK, same thing with the DJ. When I went to the DJ booth, same thing. Sometimes the DJ wasn't at the booth. More or less, I would wait for the DJ to finish a set where he took a break. I walk up to him, introduce myself to him, shake his hand, and humble myself and praise him for his work. Then once he started to notice me and everything, again, that's when I started to slip him $20 every time I talked to him or I'd ask him to play a song, okay? Now, the last one is kind of tough because it's the owner, okay? Now, the owner is a little bit of a different ball game, and the owner is going to take a little bit longer time, okay? Why? Because the owner had money. So I couldn't give him something he already had, but I could introduce myself and praise him for his club and slowly work my way into his circle. Now, how do you do that? Already, automatically, I already have three motherfuckers that's going to give me the scoop on them. The doorman, the bartender, and the DJ are going to give me the information on this guy. Also, the thing about it is sometimes the bar owner wants to hang out with some of these motherfuckers. So, guess what? When they were hanging out, I needed to be there. And when I was there, 
we would hang out most of the time with you know guys like this they want to seem like they cool and down to earth so they will either go to the gym or play basketball okay because these owners want to be recognized as regular guys too okay so again after a few games and shit like that the owner and i got cool and everything but here was a thing I never asked for anything from the owner, okay? Because I knew what my end game was. Matter of fact, what I would do once I kind of got my foot in the door with the owner, when I was able to go to these after parties and things like that, what I would do is I would bring offerings of appreciation. I'd bring his favorite beer, his favorite wine, or his favorite liquor when I was invited to a party. But the most important thing was I always stayed in my lane. Why? Because with owners, you need to gain trust. They're not going to fuck with you just after a few games of basketball or hanging out in the gym. They got to vet you and make sure that you're circle worthy. So I had to make sure that I was circle worthy. Now, not to get into it because that's real long, but after a while, I was able to get into the circle after a few months. But remember, guys, it was a few months and this is going to take some work to do. But at the end of the day, I want to show you how this works. It was all good. Now, let me go ahead and break this down. Now, the thing about good clubs, high end clubs and everything, they have long ass lines. And one thing that was real cool about us and our boys, we will always bypass the line and we will always walk in before everybody else. Everybody want to know who the fuck we are and why do we get in? How do we do that? Because of what I did with the bartender. And then there were some times when we would walk down the line and we find some badass bitches. So what we do is we ask, hey, yo, yo y'all want to get the club? Come on with me. And I take my hand out, grab her hand, and I walk her to the guy. He look at me. He say, what's up? Give me some love. And I walk my ass in the line, okay? That's how I worked the bartender. That was a breakdown. Excuse me. That was a breakdown of the doorman. Now, as soon as I got to the door, he let us in. Now, this happened all the time. But once inside, I always would tell the woman, if I was with a woman all the time, that I'd tell her I'd get at her a little bit later, okay? Then I would do what I always tell you guys to do. Once I said bye to her, I would talk to the first group of women that I saw. That's just how it was. Then when I saw someone I liked and everything and I wanted to dance, guess what I would do? I'd go over and make my way over to her, start talking that yak in her ear and everything and have a dance with her. Now, what I would do is, what was smooth is, before I dance, I'd ask her, hey, what you want to dance to? What's your favorite? song she give me the name of the song i take her hand and i walk her over to the dj give him some love give him some dap and all the other stuff tell him this um told him the song that i wanted to play and we were good whether it was a slow song or fast song she was really impressed that i knew the dj okay so once we got a chance and then we danced and everything what i would do after that is i would go to the bar because i'm saying shit i'm getting a little thirsty and everything but always remember I never buy drinks for women. I never have and never will. Remember, you want to work the players in the club, not the pieces. So once I got over there, because the bartender knew who I was, he knew what I was drinking automatically. He knew when I got to the bar, guess what? Hey, what's up, Steve? I got you, man. I know what you're getting. He already fixing my drink. The chick over here is one. Damn, how's this motherfucker know you and everything? Even though it was a crowd of people, he would recognize me and he would take care of me first. Then he would ask me when he saw me with a lady, he would ask me, hey, yo, what you want to get your girl? I'm going to say, hey, what you, what you drinking? And he would take care of the tab. I wouldn't have to do that because of all the work that I did previously now the owner which was the most important thing like I said it took a while to get real cool with the owner to get uh to get in his inner circle but the great thing about the owner is when I got in the club a lot of times I saw the owner gave him some love gave him some dap he asked me what I'm doing he said you know what I got a spot for you guess what VIP free drinks and everything setting everything up and guess what also, he would also hook us up with women, after parties, swingers, and orgies. But that's a whole different story. But like I said, I only took $100 out to do that. But I know you guys are like, how'd you flip your money? Well, the way I flip my money, because this is more of a gigolo thing. I never had to really pay to get in the club once I got my foot in the door. Once I was able to play the players of the game and be able to work them motherfuckers, what happened was I got myself a certain type of status that these women wanted to know who I was, what I was doing, and why I was in there. And they got real interested in me. And then what happened 
once I got him outside that environment and outside the club, you know, I like I said before, Master the Bedroom, Five Play, the fucking 101, Kissing, the Making Out, Conversation Classes. So all this stuff worked out well because I not only did I make my $100 back that I used to invest in the, the club, I made I flipped my money at least 10 times over with a lot of these women because of most of these women were high end women that were getting money from other people. So what happened was if she's getting money from another motherfucker, she would get that money to me. She would take me out. She would buy me clothes. So you see, I only used one hundred dollars, but I invested it into the club and not into the bitches. So remember, guys, you can be a boss on a budget. It takes a little bit of time, and a little bit of work. But once you in, you in. OK, guys, sorry I ran too long, but I had to explain the whole thing. But anyway, you want to holler at me? The man mindset dot com, triple W dot the man mindset dot com. I'm the motherfucking Dean. Guys, come on, like, subscribe, share. Tell five of your boys about this and let's get this moving going. All right. Peace.